It all starts many years ago when I was a rugby coach of 32 great underrated rugby players. On that time, everything that we did on practice was related with gaps. So my major concern was, how can I coach my team, my players, in a way that can learn how to use gaps? Gaps are an expression of space, and as expressed by the faces of both defenders here, this space will tend to close quite fast. But the thing is, this space between defenders can close in a non-linear way. Sometimes it seems that space will close very slowly and then suddenly close quite fast, whereas other times it seems that the space between defenders will close quite fast, but then space remains. The only thing that I know was that space offer opportunities of action, opportunities for the attack to create threatening situations for the defense. So my quietness was, how can I create learning environments where my players learn to use something that is continuously changing as space-time gaps? That's when I start studying social interactions. On a significant part of social daily interactions, space and time play a crucial role in human behavior. For instance, when they need to move on a crosswalk, when the green light turns on, the way we move is highly influenced by the space that is left available between the subjects on my right side and on my left side, but also by the trajectories of the subjects who come in the opposite direction. Well, the same is true for the so-called zipper effect in a traffic jam. When we are driving our car and we get close to an interception point and we saw a car coming from the right side, usually we slow down and let the car enter behind us. If everybody follow this space-time rule, the traffic jam will flow very easily. And usually it works, with the exception of the weekends. Years later, as a researcher, I got the chance to get access to a huge data sets of positional data. So I can have the chance to satisfy my curiosity and decrease my anxiety regarding space-time gaps. That's why the, the, the theme for my talk today is regarding with space, time, technology and possibilities of pass in football. But for those who are less familiar with football, let me tell you why the pass it is so important. It is with the pass that the team can remain with ball possession. Also, it is with the pass that the ball carrier can explore the space between defenders, aiming to put the ball to a support player located closest to the opposing goal, which increases the chances to score. Well, football, it is not much different from the other social interactions. When we look to a football field, something that it is not missing is space. Even when we put 22 players within this space, still had a considerable amount of space. But the thing is, this space change, constrained by ball displacements and also by the relative positions to the other players within the field, each player needs to move. And when they move, they change the spatial configurations, which consequently will change the opportunities of actions that were created. Coaches own an enormous ability to see how the space is being used. They can see what are the, the opportunities that were created by the space that was left available between defenders. However, as we enter in the third decade of the 21st century, industrial tools as drones, 3D printers, virtual reality devices and GPS become consumer products and they can change the way we analyze football. In 2000 was developed the first GPS prototype to be worn by a football player. 15 years later, 2015, football players were authorized to use GPS during official competitive matches. And three years later, in 2018, it was authorized to the performance analysis staff conveying information to the technical staff which is seated on the, be on the bench concerning position data during the course of a match. Which means that data, if properly used, can change the course of a match. The thing is, when we have got access to use data sets of positional data, if we do not know what we are looking for, data can become incomprehensible. However, positional data 
the wealth that, that had is on these spatial coordinates, x and y coordinates. With the spatial coordinates, we can calculate each player current position on the field, but also we can estimate where each player can be in the very close future. Well, up to a certain point, we can say that uh, with the positional data, we can predict the future. Yes, a very close future, about one second, but it is possible to calculate what, which are the current opportunities of action for one player, but also estimated what are the opportunities of action that will become available in a very near future. I know what I was looking for if I got access to positional data. This is a draft that I drew four years ago. I used to draw my ideas. The colored circles over there represent a heat map and they identified the areas of the field where passing opportunities occurred often. However, to put this research project ongoing, I need another sort of knowledge. I need someone from mathematics, I need someone from physics, and I also need someone from computer sciences. Up to a certain point, we need to recognize our limitations. It is very important not being alone and create a multidimensional team. So I move on to my other research projects. And one day, I receive an email from a theoretical physicist to work with me on a startup. And the email said something like this. Pedro, I really like to work with you on the startup. Uh, you know that I'm doing my PhD thesis but I would like to do something else related with sports science research. Do you have something for me? Do you know my computer skills, you know that there is no impossible for me. And this part of the sentence was the trigger that made me think that, well, this guy might, might be the right guy to help me on this project. So I said, yes, I do have something for you. What about creating a landscape of passing opportunities in football? Well, that sounds good. Send me the rules, I will write down the code. So we start working on the project. We made several drafts, but one day the project stopped. A PhD thesis is highly demanding. It was his priority and we stopped the project. Again, I move on to my other research projects and a few months later, I receive another email. This time from a Spanish guy, which, which was a master student in Ireland in, and in Netherlands. And it's, the email said something like this. Pedro, we do not know each other. I am a master's student, almost finished my thesis. I would like to move forward for a PhD program. Do you have something for me? Well, yes, I have. What about a landscape of passing opportunities in football? Well, that sounds good. I'm going to Lisbon. Shall we met? Yes, of course. So I come to Lisbon, we met, and in the middle of a couple of beers, we drew the PhD program. On that time, we know that we need someone else. That's when I called to a mechanical engineering highly skilled in mathematics, we apply for a PhD grant, which we got it. But now we need data, more data and more accurate data to train the algorithm. That's when I decided to call to a sports scientist who work in the Barca Innovation Hub. I present the project, he, got, he was quite enthusiastic with the project. He presented to the boss and the boss said yes. And since then, we are collaborating with the Barca Innovation Hub. And this is the great team who embraced this project. With the team formed, we restart the project. And the first step was, how can we create a footprint which identify each passing opportunity? So the rules are these. We have the ball carrier and support player current and estimated positions, and we have two potential passing lines. We also have the defender's current and estimated position. If none of the defenders will be able to touch any of the potential passing lines, a geometrical shape will be formed. And when we, it will be formed, we can paint this geometric shape, which identifies a footprint of each passing opportunity. Now imagine that during the course of a match, we can overlay all these footprints. By doing this, we can create a heat map, which represents what is a landscape of passing opportunities in football. And this is the output that we got so far. On the left side of the screen, you have the, an animation of the player's positional data during a match. And on the right side of the screen, you have the heat maps of both teams and their analysis. But now we have our first question. Is it possible that the algorithm can identify the differences between the two landscapes of both teams in competition? This is the heat map 
of the blue team. And we can see they, they can create passing opportunities on the central lane, a little bit biased to the right side. Whereas the red team can create passing opportunities all over the field. So the first question, yes, the algorithm can identify the differences between both players, both teams and their analysis. But then we have a second question. Is it possible that the algorithm can capture if something happened during the course of a match and something happened? One of the players from the blue team got the red card, which means that he was sent off of the field, which means that the blue team played almost for half an hour only with 10 players. They need to readapt the spatial configuration, which consequently changed the passing opportunities, as we can see in the heat map of the blue team. However, the most interesting result was on this. How the red team adapt to these changes on the blue team's spatial configuration? Instead of creating passing opportunities all over the field, they concentrate the efforts to create threatening situations on the central lane of the field. So the algorithm can identify the changes on these static configurations on, on, on one of the teams. So then we have our third question. But before moving on, allow me to speak a bit about tactical formations for those who are less familiar with football. For sure, you already heard to talk on the TV about these combinations of numbers, 442, 433, whatsoever. These are tactical formations and identified how many players should play on each part of the field. For instance, our team always play on a 4-3-3, which means four defenders, three midfielders, three attackers. The thing is, it is very difficult during the course of a match to maintain the statical formation. Again, constrained by ball displacements and by the changes in the relative position to the others, players need to move. So the third question was, is it possible that a team that played always with the same tactical formation, 4-3-3 as our team, can display a similarity in the landscapes that were created in a course, in, across several matches? We create the heat maps for five matches of our team. Also, we move forward and we found out a method that allows us to quantify the difference between these images. The output is quite easy to analyze. The coldest colors, the blue ones, identify a high similarity between the images. Whereas the warmest colors, the yellow, the orange and the red, display a low similarity between images. We can see here by the, the, the matrix on the right side of the screen that between the first and the fourth match, they are quite similar. The most interesting result is this one, the fifth match, quite different from all the others. We want to know why we watched the match again to see why this happens, what, what was the main reason. And one possible reason was the opponents play with the defensive line upwards in the field, quite close to our own midfield, which create a high pressure, which decreased the space that our team had to perform passes. Again, the algorithm was able to capture these changes in tactical formations. What about time, the time that each passing opportunity was available. We calculate this for each one of the players. And we saw that, for instance, the right center back, every time that the passing opportunity was created, they had, on average, 1.2 seconds to perform a pass. Whereas the midfielders, every time that creates a passing opportunity, it had less than a second to perform a pass. But the most interesting result was this one the strikers. Every time that the passing opportunity was created, they had approximately half a second to receive that ball. These results let us overwhelmed. We know that the time that the passing opportunities were available was short. We never thought that had so tiny time windows. And these results emphasize the relevance of an accurate perception regarding space-time gaps. Practice do this. With practice, players become fine-tuned regarding when and where and how long each passing opportunity remain available. So perhaps the core business of training team sports should be, should be based on how to create an accurate perception and action regarding space-time gaps. And this is our magic number, which has a mixed feeling of anxiety and happiness. Up to a certain point, someone asked, 
How do you, did you know that your model is really capturing passing opportunities? Well, objectively, we don't know. But as we had in our data set all the effective passes, we do the following thing. We run the algorithm one second before each effective pass. The idea was to see if the model had the ability to guess that an effective pass was about to happen. And on average, for the five matches under analysis, the model can identify 80% of the passes that really happen. And this result boosts our confidence in the model. We can create a landscape of passing opportunities which can identify the vulnerability on the defense, but also the dangerousness of the attack. My expectation for the future is that one day, football analysis will be like Formula One, where we can gather information from highly advanced technology with the knowledge that comes from years of experience of coaches' eyes. Coaches own an enormous gut feeling concerning what happens within the field. No one knows better than the coach what happens within the field. Now imagine a coach with a good gut feeling, but powered with data. Those who can, or dare, to ally the specific knowledge from a specific domain is football, with the knowledge that can come from mathematics, physics and computer sciences. Perhaps we'll find out the holy girl. Thank you very much for your attention.